So when it comes to working in teams, people often ask me, what are the best tools for understanding the way that people are in teams? Because clearly people are different from each other. How do we make sense of that? And there are lots and lots of different models, lots of different ways of looking at this. I think what would be useful would be to have a, a clear idea of the different types of models and how they're useful. So one of the most well-known models about the way that people are different from each other in teams would be Belbin's team roles. So Professor Belbin did the research on this way back, I think, in about the 1970s, looking at high-performing teams. And the original hypothesis was that the higher IQ across a team, the better they would perform. And the researchers were quite surprised to find that the combined IQ of a team was not the best predictor of their success in working together. What they actually discovered was that people played different roles within a team and that if you had all of those roles represented, then the team would perform. So if you're interested in looking at a team and saying, OK, how are we all different? How are we the same? How can we work together? This can be a really good model in terms of identifying the different ways that people support the team, the different things they bring to the party, if you like. So, so Belbin's model is a sociological model which means that it's looking at how people interact with each other. So, so if you were to um, complete the profile, you would be doing that with a particular team in mind. And what it would do, it would, it would give you insight into your role within that team. Now, if you're also part of multiple teams, you may find that in a different team, you are playing a different role. Yeah. So when I say it's a sociological model, it's not about who you are, it's about the way you interact with other people. So, so the model describes the behaviour of a particular group, a team. So that's one way of making sense of how people are in teams. Secondly, you might look at a personality profile. So this is a psychological model <laughs> where it's about the, the patterns of an individual. And a personality profile would tell you something about yourself that would hold true across all the teams that you might um, be part of. It would hold true in lots of different areas of your life. The personality model tells you a bit about who you are. So again, popular model, something like the Myers-Briggs type indicator, you know, has 16 different types and will tell you which of those 16 types you are fundamentally most like. And also, rather than saying that you know, that's your pigeonhole, you live there, um, it's more about saying, so this is sort of the central element of your personality. And in different situations, you will operate out of different types. So, you know, you're flexible. We know that people are not the same all the time. We know that people sometimes do things that are a little bit different from how we're used to seeing them. You know, people use the phrase out of character. Um, but also, many people operate in different ways in their working life or in their home life, you know, and they, they might operate in a different way again when they're uh, pursuing their favourite hobby or playing a sport. So different situations can bring out different facets of a person's character. The, the personality profile will give us a kind of, on average, on balance, over time, these are the sorts of things that we're likely to see this person doing. And in a team environment, that can be useful because it gives people insights into how somebody might be different from yourself, about how to bring the best out of somebody else. It can give insights into the fact that there are just different ways of approaching things. And, you know, the first time somebody is exposed to this way of thinking, it, it can be quite liberating to suddenly realise that just because somebody else does something in a different way from me, that doesn't mean they're right and I'm wrong, or vice versa. It, you know, it just means we're different. The third thing that you can look at would be models that simply look at um, one aspect of behaviour. My favourite model in this regard is the language and behaviour profile, or lab profile. And the lab profile is a behaviour model. So it's, it's not about um, who you are. It's not about the roles that you play within a team. It's just about how you are in a given circumstance. And it gives us an idea of what motivates people and some of the patterns that make them most productive in a given scenario. 
So, so we can do somebody's lab profile for different teams that they're part of. And you know, the lab profile somebody has when they're the leader of the team might be significantly different from the lab profile that they have in a team where they're not the leader and they're you know, part of a peer group. Again, you know, looking at this will give you valuable insights into not just the way that somebody is when they're working on their own, but also how they interact with other people and what some of those patterns are. So lots of different ways of making sense. I think for me, the important thing about building a team is about doing something that helps people understand, yes, we're all different from each other. What are the natures of those differences and what do we do about them? I always think that the first stage in developing a team is, is the step that goes from the awareness of the differences where people are starting to be irritated and frustrated with each other. Why won't you do it the way I want you to do it? Why do you always do that? You know, And getting annoyed and the differences are a source of frustration and they're a problem to, to arriving at a point where the understanding of those differences means that they can see the differences as a strength. So the fact that you do something differently from the way I do it means that you know, we can help each other, means that you know, I can delegate stuff to other people in the team that are not my strength, I can support other people with the skills that I have and the preferences that I have, that actually that diversity is what makes us a great team and should be celebrated rather than the differences being seen as a problem. So I just think that's, that's kind of... The first step in a, a team coming together is being able to understand the differences and say, isn't it great that we've got so much diversity in our team? The tools that you use to get there, they almost don't matter. <laughs>